Hi, my name is Mary, and in today's video I'll be sharing with you a non-fiction micro-review of this book, Why Your Five-Year-Old Could Not Have Done That, Modern Art Explained by Susie Hodge. Fun fact about me is that I used to work in an art gallery, first as an art dealer and then as an art gallery manager. And during my time there, I would sometimes have really wonderful clients who would want to talk about the history of art, who would keep an open mind to whatever we had, even if it wasn't their particular taste, they could appreciate the merit of some of our artists. Now, I also had clients who were very particular, and in particular who would look at something, for example, like this, not this one in particular, but something like this, an abstract painting, and say, I can't believe people spend so much money on that. My five-year-old could have done that. You can imagine why I was so excited to pick up this book. I will say that this book wasn't quite what I expected when I picked it up and actually got a chance to look into it. So the book has several different chapters within it that are kind of dichotomies between an artist and a child and how we should interpret a particular piece differently between them. So first chapter is objects and toys, the second one is expressions and scribbles, the third one is provocations and tantrums, the fourth one is called Landscapes and Playscapes, and the fifth one is called People and Monsters. And so within those, each chapter has about 20 works of art, which means that there are 100 works of art total in this book that she discusses. Each page in this book is pretty uniformly spread out with each work of art labeled with a picture as well as the information about it, information about the artist in particular and where they were in their studies, as well as some fun facts about that artist, but also there is a particular section on each of them which describes, it answers the question and ties it back into the titular question, could your five-year-old have done that? So the thing is that because this book is organized not by theme and timeline, but by category, it actually makes for kind of jumbled reading experience. So you'll see a pop artist put right next to an expressionist, put right next to a surrealist, put right next to a performance artist, and so you don't really get an art historical sense of how the movements tie together and how art history has evolved over the course of the 20th century. Then there's also the problem with the barrier to entry for this book. So for example, let me read from page 19, which is about a Jasper Johns flag. An accomplished painter, printmaker, and sculptor, John said he, quote, learnt what an artist was, unquote, from Robert Rauschenberg, and was stimulated by the gestural style of Willem de Kooning and by collaborations with composer John Cage and choreographer Merce Cunningham. One of his greatest influences was the philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein, particularly his concerns with logic and his breakdown." So in my opinion, to get the most out of that sentence, you would have to already know who Robert Rauschenberg, Willem de Kooning, John Cage, Merce Cunningham, and Ludwig Wittgenstein are. And personally, I only know half of those people. So even as an art historian myself, I'm not getting the full grasp of what she is saying. So I would shudder to think what somebody who wasn't an art historian would be getting out of passages like that one. I also don't really think that this book is going to convince anyone who is so doggedly determined to say things like my five year old could have done that. The thing about modern art is that you need to keep an open mind. And when someone says something like that, for the most part, they don't want to be educated, at least in my experience. They really just want to be dismissive or to almost protect themselves from feeling like they are being taken advantage of or that they are having one pulled over on them. That's been my experience with people who say things like that. So the thing is that in this book, if I were to structure a book like this, I instead would teach about the evolution of modern art. If you get a sense of why modern art is the way it is, I would hope that that would answer most people's questions. So for example, I would probably start talking about the invention of the camera and what it meant for artists that for the majority of the, since the Renaissance, the goal had been a sort of kind of naturalism in their art, then you have a camera which can do that instantly. Doesn't that mean that art would have to evolve and do something else and do something that photography can't do. So that would be something that I would talk about, and it would talk in a linear way, working through the art movements, talking about what they're reacting to around them. That's how I would structure this book, because otherwise I don't really think you're getting the evolution of art that you really need to understand some of these works of art in here. 
So that sounds like I was being overly mean. I don't actually dislike this book because I, as an art historian, there were a lot of things in here that I got and I found a lot of works of art in here that were new to me and that I enjoyed. It certainly has its place. For me personally, that place is going to be on my shelf in my office when I have students coming by and we can look at it and have a little bit of a giggle. It was definitely worth it to me just for that alone. I will leave you, as I often do in these micro-reviews, with my favorite fun fact that I learned in this book. And that is that the artist Grayson Perry uses artwork that incorporates some of his childhood characters, his imaginary friends and stuffed animals in it, including his favorite hero and teddy bear, Alan Measles. If anything that I've said has made you interested in picking up this book, I will leave more information to where you can find it down below, and I will also be leaving my contact information if you want to get in contact and talk about who your favorite modern artists are. Thank you very much for watching. Bye!